Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're back with another metal market update. We're gonna talk about steel, aluminum, where the construction market is headed in quarter one of 2022. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. And today we got another update for you for quarter one of 2022. So today I've got Adam Mazzella from Sheffield Metals, a metal roof manufacturer in the United States. And tell us a little bit, Adam, about where the market is right now and what we've kind of seen. Yeah, so we're coming out of just this extraordinary time where because of the pandemic and all this pent up demand and everybody spending time at home to just this thing, when things opened up and really let loose, the market exploded. And this was already a market that was challenged with labor. It's a market that, you know, most people in our position, or I'd say the entire market, was challenged because of supply chain issues. So most people were on allocation. A lot of people couldn't get things as much as they'd like to get to, to be able to service all of this pent up demand. So I think what we're seeing from really August of 2020 to where we're at today, January 2022, is I think a lot of that stuff is starting to soften a little bit. I would say the market is still relatively strong. Um, the architectural billings are still up, but we are seeing some softening. Um, a lot of the indexes that we're seeing in the steel world, the aluminum world, they're starting to creep back, I'd say to more reasonable levels. It's not a dropping like a rock, which is encouraging. Um, but things are starting to, we'll call it stabilize. Now, what does stabilize look like? Where does that mean the pricing and the, the market is going? I think is to be determined. But, you know, the, the extraordinary event of, you know, the market opening up and really the significant amount of construction, particularly metal construction that's occurred in the last 18 months has been extraordinary. It's been extraordinary for the industry. Uh, it's been extraordinary for homeowners, home builders, as you've seen your investment in your house or your investment in your building has done nothing but appreciate. And then you're adding value on top of that and modernizing your, your project on top of that. So I think we're seeing a lot of things starting to peak out. So the market could still stay strong, um, but there's a number of factors that really go into you know where things are going to go from here. And, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of it is speculation, but just kind of looking at where we've come from really the last 24 months, give or take, to uh, you know where we feel things are gonna be going into 2022. And we'll get into some more product specific stuff here yeah. in a second, but I wanna get back to what you said about the design side and the architectural indexes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Explain why that's important and where they are right now. Yeah, so the architectural indexes, again, we're in the first week of 2022, so we don't have any data for December, but uh, things are still trending in a positive light. They're trending down a little bit as far as the architectural billings. However, they are still viewed as a, as a positive uh, light. You know, above 50 is, is positive. November and then all the prior months for, let's say, all of 2021 were positive from the architectural billing standpoint. They are softening. Part of that could be the seasonality. I mean, we're, we're in the winter, certainly not as much construction happens or construction doesn't happen as fast in the winter. So I think people could also be, be saying, hey, these, these products are extremely expensive. I'm going to be paying a premium. What if I wait three months, six months? But as far as the billings go, we're still building stuff. Things are still being quote unquote commissioned to be built in the future. So from that perspective, uh, they're saying and projecting that the market is going to stay strong. Now, uh, there's a number of things that could continue to drive that number down, but uh, we don't have the December numbers. Certainly, uh, we don't know what you know the market is going to do, but we we feel it's going to at least stay strong in the first quarter to the first half of 2022. Now we've seen steel, uh, that's the price of steel come down recently. Is that something that we can expect to see going into the future and going into 2022? Sure, I, you know, I think a lot of the steel price is, is really tied to a lot of the supply chain challenges. I mean, you see the things in the news about the, the chip shortages. A lot of the automotive manufacturers 
didn't even come close to what their targets for 2021 were. And a lot of it was, hey, we can build as many cars as we want, but we can't complete them. We can't put chips in them. So we're only going to build so many that we can complete. As uh, companies recover from the chip shortage and have a high demand for more uh, automotive products, let's say, that is a huge consumer of flat rolled steel products, which is the world that we play in. If the automotive world bounces back dramatically, there might not be you know, this, this continued landing. It could actually drive the price back up into new higher levels. Um, so we, you know, we don't really roll the dice with the market. You know, we buy what we need as we need it. And we, we you know, it's kind of, we follow the market up, we follow the market down. Um, and everywhere in between, you know, the anticipation is, is that, you know, we think the market's going to soften a little bit. I mean, you're looking at December, January, February, the traditional slowest construction months of the year. It really depends on where the supply chains go that will drive other complementary metal products uh, from there. So we've talked about steel. What about aluminum? Are we seeing the same thing? Is it acting a little differently? Yeah, I think the aluminum world's a little bit different. The, the domestic steel world, for instance, has a lot of mills, you know, kind of across the country. Really, the domestic aluminum market is dominated by two primary mills. So I think aluminum has inherently behaved a little bit differently. There's not as many products that are dependent on, you know, the chips like the steel world is. So um, the aluminum world, I think, is a little bit different because uh, the demand for aluminum is still extremely high. And that market, you know, it, it peaked, it came down, and then it seems to be going back up again. So I think aluminum prices will continue to stay on the higher end. You know, we're not anticipating aluminum prices dropping. We've seen increases in fab charges. The domestic mills are pretty much maxed out at what, they, what they're willing to provide in our product mix. And we're actually starting to see more and more import come into the United States. So we think that that is going to keep that price relatively high. You know, and part of it is, is how much of the import comes in that's going to drive pricing pressure, you know, back down. So. So you mentioned earlier that we've seen that construction demand overall yeah. really explode in the last couple of years. Is that something that you see continuing? I think from, it, it's going to depend by market. So if you look at a lot of the things that were hit hard by the, the pandemic, you didn't see as many people at malls, movie theaters, retail, things like that. I don't think retail is going to have just this major boom. I think when people start to feel real comfortable again coming out of the pandemic, then we'll see a big retail boom. Kind of looking at it, we're, we're kind of seeing where are people spending their time and that's where the money is being spent. So a lot of residential construction, I mean, residential construction has been enormous. I think we're still going to see strong construction demand on the residential side. You know, I think that'll certainly soften if the prices continue to just go, go, go. The other big challenge that we're seeing that could keep prices high, that could keep demand uh, relatively high, is the limited skilled labor that we see in really all construction. So, you know, we talk to our customers, uh, roll formers, contractors, wholesalers, the number one thing we hear, and we've been hearing this for years, regardless of the pandemic, well before the pandemic, is access to skilled labor. People that can can do the work, do a good job with the work. I think the biggest opportunity, you know, moving forward really is people that are willing to, you know, get into contracting, you know, willing to learn the trade, uh, become good at it, and then be able to, to successfully manage a really strong metal fabrication business. I think there's tons of money in there and you don't need to go to school to, to learn that. You're really learning, making money, learning on the fly. What other types of factors do we see that's you know causing prices to increase, decrease, have volatility? Sure. So, you know, one of the big things that we're seeing is a lot of pricing pressure on the paint side in our world. So um, our, our world is really PVDF paint. You know, there's a couple of different levels of paint, PVDF being the, the highest end architectural coating that we work with on a daily basis. So that coating is used heavily in other areas and there is a lot of strain on the market as far as being able to get the PVDF or Kynar coating. Paint prices are going to continue to rise and we're, we're not sure how much more, but you know we, we have a feeling that they're gonna be significant going into 2022. So even if we are starting to see the price of steel drop, 
um, or aluminum, whatever it might be, some of the softening that could be that you may inherently think is in the market may be gobbled back up by the, the cost of paint going up. You know, that's something that we're actively keeping an eye on. I mean, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we can take care of our customers. Some of the alternatives that, you know, may start to creep into the high-end architectural world is using a lesser of a paint system. Certainly, we, we can't really speak definitively that, hey, there's going to be a big market shift to that. But, you know, that's one of the things that we're keeping an eye on and trying to, you know, trying to make sure that we can provide our customers, you know, the highest end, top end quality things and, and be able to make it at a reasonable price or not too big of a spread between that and a substitute type of product. So, And because, you know, we can't really say definitively what the market's going to do. You know, there's a lot of questions out there and nobody's really sure. Yeah. You know, as a business owner, what are you supposed to do with that information? You know, how can you prepare yourself and protect yourself in the best way possible? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the same thing as your home finances. So whether you're a business person, a homeowner, what sort of value does this spend have? Um, can I finance this? If I do finance this, how much is the financing going to cost me? You know, you don't ever want to put yourself in a position where you're gambling and saying, hey, it's all or nothing. You certainly want to avoid that whether you're a business person or a homeowner. So if you're saying, hey, I need a roof, um, I can spend $15,000 for a, a comp shingle asphalt roof, or I can spend $35,000, but I don't have $35,000, I can't finance it, go spend 15K that you hopefully can afford that isn't going to put you in trouble. And the same goes for really any valid business decision. I think we're coming out of a very, very prosperous, you know, portion of time. I would say from a, a speculation standpoint, don't overextend yourself. Um, you know, treat it, treat it like, you know, if you're going to spend it, you've got the money to spend. You know, if you're saying, oh yeah, well, home prices are at an all time high, I can spend this 20K and it's going to turn into 40K of value. I don't know that anybody knows that. Inflation could stay high, but home values could drop. There's no definitive answer other than I would say, I think things are starting to soften, you know, in, in the whole of the economy. So it may not be the best time to just go bananas, uh, particularly if you don't have the money to do so. Again, for business owners, we've seen CapEx equipment prices go up, whether that's a roll form or a brake, shear, a forklift. Lead times have increased, prices have gone up. You know, what, what's your advice for a business owner looking into something like that right now? So if you think there's demand in your business to go and invest in your business so you could grow your business, I mean, I'd say go for it. There are viable alternatives to going and spending $100,000, dollars on machinery or, or equipment, but if it comes into, you know, hey, I gain 15%, 20%, 30% on my products by taking control of manufacturing, and I still have the demand for it, and I know what I'm doing with this machinery and this equipment. If you know that you can make money on it, I mean, that's a good bet on yourself, good bet on your business to be able to go and do that. Take control of your manufacturing. You know, you may want to look at it and say, hey, I, I just don't have the demand right now. I've had two years of phenomenal demand and, and a great pace to my business, and I have a pile of money I would love to spend. But if you don't, you know, if you don't have enough to spend to carry you through a potential lull, maybe you should sit back, you know, and nobody wants to sit on money, particularly with what inflation is doing right now, but buy a truck, buy a roll former, but don't overextend yourself. I mean, I think that's the last thing you want to do. You know, in addition, if you are looking to spend money, I mean, there still are a lot of federal programs out there, you know, Section 179, things like that, that will allow you to have bonus depreciation. It's always good to look ahead and say, hey, I'm anticipating I've got a backlog for six months for 2022. I know I'm going to do well this year, particularly for two thirds of the year. It's probably a good opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to invest in this equipment now. I'll probably get it in three to four to five months. That way you can have that bonus depreciation waiting for you for calendar year 2022. A lot of times we see people calling us in November and December saying, hey, how quick can I get a roll former? I, my accountant said I need to go and spend money. Particularly, you know, what's going to add value to your business? That you can take a big chunk of depreciation out of your earnings the year that you bought the equipment. Thanks, Adam. Really appreciate yeah. it. Make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel to be kept up to date on all the industry news. Comment down below with questions. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.